welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you to those of you who have supported my channel by liking and subscribing. Your support allows me to continue to bring you fountain pen reviews as I am unsponsored on this channel, so thanks. And happy Valentine's Day to all you pen lovers out there and to Winnie. I'm very excited about this review. This has been weeks in development. The day after New Year's, I received an email from a viewer from the Netherlands named Mikael Stoop. Hi Mikael. He told me he was a long time viewer and asked whether I had ever tried a Ranga pen and offered to make a gift of any model Ranga pen I wanted. I responded that I never had one and my experience of pens made in India was only with Fountain Pen Revolution's Himalaya, which left a sour taste in my nose. Cool. I told him that my colleague Alan Light adores his huge Ranga Model 5, which makes his top 10 fountain pens list every year, and that I would look into purchasing one. I ignored his offer to gift me one as I'm always overwhelmed by people's generosity and don't want to encourage it. He wrote back immediately, forcefully offering me any Ranga model I wished. I grudgingly accepted his incredible generosity and went to Ranga's website and picked out the least expensive model I could find and told him about it. Mikhail refused to accept the base model and using my preferences, ordered me this Ranga 4C in the three in one configuration because he felt that, quote, I believe your first experience with a Ranga should be a good one, if not a great one. He ordered the pen for me and it arrived just a couple of weeks ago and I've been writing with it ever since. It is my first Ranga and my first all ebonite fountain pen. So let's take a look at this big Indian fountain pen and see what happens when this hard rubber hits the road right now. <music> Well, this is exciting, I must say. I'm like a kid on Christmas Eve. I got a note from a gentleman in the Netherlands named Michael Stoop. And uh, that came at the beginning of January, asking me if I'd be interested in a Ranga pen. He said, I would like to gift you one. Well, I'm just stunned. That's amazingly generous. And uh, here it is in my hands. It's uh, come directly from India but it's hand sewn linen bag from India with handwriting, which indicates the homegrown nature of the uh, Ranga business it's out of one home. And uh, this certainly is a, an indication of that. So let's see if we can open this up. And it's in newsprint. Well, so this is all very environmentally friendly packaging, but hand done newsprint and cello tape. And here we have a lovely faux alligator case and it's a button. And inside we have the pen on oh, an extra pen, a demonstrator. And it's a piston filler. And we have an eyedropper. And a card from Ranga. Madras email, all good contact information. And a note, I've been taught to read the card first in any gift. Dear Mr. Douglas, hope you are doing great. Thank you for your great videos and best wishes from Mr. Michael Stoop, Netherlands. Kindly accept our hearty thanks for your service to the fountain pen community. Kindly treat this as a personal invitation to visit our small pen workshop in India along with your family. Oh, an invite whenever we're in India. Well, that's lovely. Personal attention. And here is the pen. This is a Ranga Model 4C made of ebonite and I ordered a broad and that certainly looks like a broad. 
there's an ebonite feed well I'm going to look forward to giving this pan a workout again thanks go out to Mikael I'm going to try to pronounce your name correctly Mikael Stroop from the Netherlands for gifting me this fine beautiful pen and what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample after the writing sample please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen first I have to mention how personal all of this feels to me from the gifting of this pen from Mikael the hand packaging of the handmade pen the included handwritten note that I got from the owner of the company uh, the whole thing has been very intimate and very special we're not dealing with a luxury brand making thousands of units and dealing with customers through multi-brand distributors here this is a family company that makes these pens out of the home I have to mention that because it affects everything about the review I think the word used today is artisanal there was an article from the BBC recently that was forwarded to me by two pen friends the very week I was having a conversation about this pen with Miguel um, I'll link it in the description but here's an excerpt from the article that speaks to Ranga specifically it says India is a fast emergence source and market for artisanal pens the world is also getting to know about us says MB Kandan second generation owner of the 50 year old Ranga pens based in Tiruvallur in Tamil Nadu please forgive my pronunciation and Ranga pens small workshop in a family home offers more than 400 models in 250 colors and sells more than 500 pens every month most of its pens are sold abroad and one of his more talked about models is handcrafted to resemble natural bamboo pattern all of this affects the review because I hold this pen to a different standard than something from say Cross Waterman Conklin or Visconti well not so much a different standard but a different expectation as we shall see this pen has flaws that would send me screaming to my retailer if it were a Visconti or even a pen BS but in this pen's case <laughs> pen case pen case I almost had a joke there son you gotta keep your eye on the ball eye ball eyeball I almost had a gag son joke that is but in this pen's case these flaws are part of the artisanal charm of the creation of the writing instrument plus I note these flaws at the same time that I overlook them because of this pen's design and performance as we shall see overall this is a big pen let's look at it next to a pilot metropolitan to get the sheer scale of this pen this model 4c is a classic cigar shape it is made of ebonite which is vulcanized rubber ebonite is actually a brand name that has become synonymous with this material like Kleenex is with tissue or band-aids are with well band-aids this is a classic fountain pen material fountain pens from the early part of the last century were mostly made from vulcanized hard rubber meant to replace ebony wood hence the name ebonite the early Parker dual fold was vulcanized rubber and in the early years the only color it came in was black that changed when they found a way to make them red or orange as it actually turned out and the dual fold big red was the result now of course ebonite comes in a variety of colors and patterns as you see from the huge variety available from Ranga on their web page I chose black because I felt as my first ebonite experience it would already be a throwback nostalgic experience so black would just add to that antique feeling and I was right nothing feels like this the pen is incredibly light for its size and the feeling of the ebonite against your skin is really quite unique all of you who own ebonite pens are nodding your heads in agreement with me right now aren't you <laughs> let's take a look at the ebonite when you look closely you'll see the marks where the pen was turned and polished on the lathe 
Now that you can see that, I'll get it a little bit closer. You can see those turning marks, and even on the end of the pen, you'll see some swirls there and some turn marks throughout the pen. You'll also see some various pits and blemishes in the ebonite. Let's see if we can catch one here. There's one right there in that highlight. I don't mind the pits and the blemishes as much as the turning marks. The blemishes can be chalked up to the raw materials in a non-sophisticated hand-making pen operation. However, these abrasion marks from turning are from just not taking enough time to polish it out carefully. I could polish these marks out myself with some elbow grease and polishing compound. I might actually do that. From the top, we see a domed top of the cap, which then has a slightly perceptible seam right here. You can see that line. That's not a turning mark. That's a seam right there, where I assume the cap is assembled to allow for this clip to extend out from the body like that. The gold metal clip has a really nice swoop to it and is nicely springy. It works really nicely. It has Ranga laser etched into the surface, and that's the only branding on this pen. The cap is straight to the end and transitions with absolutely no step and hardly a seam right there to the barrel, which is also straight until about here, where it begins to taper down to the rounded end. The cap unscrews with one turn and reveals this magnificent, huge, tapering section with a large flare at the end. We like flare. All right, there's my flare, okay? And this is me expressing myself. And here is the number six size Yovo gold colored steel nib and the ebonite feed. The nib and the feed are friction fit inside that section. Let's take a closer look at the nib. It has the Yovo scroll work and no branding at all for Ranga and a B for broad. The section unscrews with a whopping 11 turns to reveal the included Schmidt branded standard international converter. There's the Schmidt brand right there. These barrel threads were coated with a good amount of silicone grease and the pen can actually be eyedroppered and will hold an incredible 3.5 milliliters of ink. You can also use standard international cartridges, uh, one in the section and one in the caboose. Inside the cap, there is a, a step milled into the ebonite there that I assume meets up with the, uh, the section for a seal. The cap posts, not too deeply, but fairly securely. It makes the pen extremely long, but that cap barely weighs anything. And it actually doesn't back weight this pen at all. Uh, so you could actually write with it like this, but you can use it as a cricket bat when you're not writing. I think this pen is designed to be written with unposted and it's amazing in the hand. This is where the hard rubber hits the road right here. This large section with the smooth threads, substantial girth and amazingly light weight is one of the two things that makes this pen great. The other is the nib, which we shall see. This pen is just a joy to write with for hours and hours. And the way it quickly caps and uncaps with one turn and has a smooth profile when it's capped with no steps whatsoever is wonderful. The step from the barrel down to those threads isn't exactly smooth, but it isn't sharp either. But it doesn't matter because this section is so huge 
that I can get a grip anywhere along here without uh, having my thumb rest uncomfortably on that step. The Ranga Model 4C sells for $74 US from rangapens.com. There are many models from ebonite to acrylic with a large selection of nibs and colors. This 4C was available in a huge range of colors with a dizzying variety of steel nib options in gold, two-tone, chrome, and even colors in red and black, as well as titanium. Other models have greater nib options, including a number eight size nib in titanium and 14 karat gold. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Ranga Model 4C with a fully when 017 Blue Danube, a Pen BBS 380, a fully when Ancient Civilizations, and a Mont Blanc, oh, sorry, a Moon Man M1000. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. And it wasn't until I put them next to each other that I noticed how similar the fully when 017 and the Ranga 4C are. Those sections are almost identical in size and in shape. And certainly the threads and the, the step, the cap posts a lot deeper on the fully when, but uh, that's a remarkable similarity right there. And you'll notice that I've converted my Pen BBS 380 into a rollerball and I'm going to keep it that way. And you'll also notice that the Mont Blanc, sorry, the Moon Man M1000 does not post. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper as always. And this is Ranga 4C. And it has a number six size steel nib in broad. And the ink today is J. Urbain. Stormy Gray. Yay, Stormy. You get a Stormy and you get a Stormy. <laughs> Let's check the wetness. This nib is very, very wet. And it is extremely, extremely smooth. I have not done anything to this nib. This is right out of the box. Uh, it's like writing with fish oil ink on butter covered glass. I don't know. It's like butter. It gives me spilkes in my Ganectica zoink. See, they're like butter. In fact, it's so wet that I have to keep filling it all the time. I'm using the converter um, and I keep running out of ink. It makes me almost want to eyedropper fill this pen. Almost. But uh, let's top it up. It'll actually give me an opportunity to use a new device that I've just received. I got these Fan Moo needle fillers uh, to adapt uh, to cartridge converters. This one is for Standard International. This one is for a Platinum. And this one is for a Pilot converter. So that's uh, really cool. Let's see how they work. The many, 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 many turns to get that out put the needle into the converter get my ink it's a black ink with uh, shimmering gold I push it all the way down to get all the air out of it pull it back up go back down again and one more time is the charm so what I like to do is get a, a tissue and crank that converter down a little bit while having the feed 
showing up towards me. And when I turn it, it's filling the fins. It starts to pull down at the nib. But I've seen Jack, when he's doing this, he floods that nib and touches to the tissue to get it flowing through the nib. Turn the nib back up again. Now you can see how much ink was in that feed because that's how much air backed off there. So when we sucked it back out of the feed. So to top this back up again, go back into my ink bottle. Now my converter is completely full and I think we're ready to write and we're full again. And here is the swatch for the G. Urbain Stormy Gray with some um, Hiroshizuku Takasumi and Mont Blanc Oyster Gray. And let's see, check the line variation. That's no pressure. It's smooth in all directions, no pressure. And we push it a little bit. It's very stiff. And comparing this line to my Richard Binder chart, it comes out at 0.9 millimeters, which is a Western broad to double broad and a Japanese broad to off the charts because they haven't got anything past broad. I suppose the Japanese don't have a listing for double broad because a kanji character written with this nib, this thick, would end up just saying blob. Don't go in, Jen. It's the most horrible thing I've ever seen in my life. Beware of the blob. It creeps and leaps and glides and slides across the floor. I keep the door and all around the wall. And for our quote, And as to some reverse writing, it's very scratchy and very dry. And some quick writing. This has no issues whatsoever in keeping up. It's very, very wet. I'm sure that ebonite feed has a lot to do with that. And so, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, I like almost everything about this pen. The pen feels amazing in the hand with its size and girth, and that Yovo broad nib is to die for. I love the way the pen balances and how it only takes one turn to cap and uncap it. And I like how it is basically seamless when it is capped. And this section is almost perfect for me. Another great thing is the price. This is extremely reasonable for an ebonite pen with a large Yovo nib and an ebonite feed. And it comes with a wonderful presentation case. Another thing, the variety from ebonite to acrylic, from steel to titanium and gold, large and huge nibs, and through a large range of models, Ranga has something for everyone. It's clear to me that the design of this pen comes from decades of pen making experience. These shapes work, they just work. I'm intrigued enough to want to get another one of these, maybe a bigger one with maybe a titanium number eight size nib. That would be cool. There are a couple of things I do have to quibble with on this pen. A small point is that I would have liked to have seen some Ranga branding on the nib because it's just blank. Uh, perhaps this cool uh, crest right here uh, on the nib would be would be interesting right there. And my final quibble is how the ebonite is polished. I think it should be polished to a degree where the tooling and turning operation marks are no longer visible. If it develops scratch marks while I'm using it, well that is just my patina. I will accept the pits and the flaws 
uh, and blemishes on this pen as it is an artisanal made writing instrument and those flaws are part of that experience. Overall, I love my Ranga and I'm going to get another one, an even bigger one. I, I, I want a big one! What'd you stop it for? And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.